Hello and welcome back to Somewhere in Wisconsin. I hope you guys are doing well. We have another decoy review today. These are some of my favorite decoys that I have purchased in the last four years. Stick with us. Hope you like this episode. Another decoy review from Somewhere in Wisconsin. <laughs> All right, decoy review number three of five. I think I'm gonna do five, maybe six decoy reviews in this series that I'm doing this off season. Just as a heads up, I have zero affiliation with any of these companies. Uh, I'm just doing some decoy reviews. So if you're going into the off season and you wanna buy some new decoys, kinda of have some things to look for, some things to consider. And my spread is made up of cheap decoys, some expensive decoys, and also uh, decoys I like and decoys I dislike. These are some of my favorite decoys that I have used in the last four years. However, these are only about a year old. There's a few reasons I like these decoys. And uh, just by the way, these are White Rock decoys. It is a either Wisconsin or Minnesota based company. Um, the decoys themselves are not made in Wisconsin or Minnesota. However, that's where the company is based out of. I can't, I think it's Wisconsin, but it might be Minnesota, not 100% sure. These are the Pool 7 Magnum Mallards from White Rock Decoys. They also have a Nomad series. The only difference, I think, between the Nomad series and the Pool 7 Magnums uh, are the weighted keels. Or these Pool 7 Magnum Mallards, they have a weighted keel already. And the Nomad series, they come with an unweighted keel, uh, but you can always add your own sand to that if later on you want to. Anyways, I really do like these decoys. There's a few reasons I like them. First of all, they're light. Um, it's an extremely light decoy. It is the lightest decoy that I own, and it's also one of the largest decoys that I own. If you got to pack in, these are a great option uh, that you can use uh, because they're so light. You know, you could fit a lot of them in your canoe, in your kayak. You could fit a bunch of them in your decoy bag uh, and carry them in on your back, or you could just throw a dozen or two dozen uh, on some Texas rigs clip them to yourself, and hike them in that way. I would probably buy these decoys again, uh, but I'm going to give it another year before I actually make that decision because there are, there is one thing right now that's concerning me about these decoys, and uh, that is the paint. Now, it seems like a very durable paint. These are uh, unique because they're kind of like a squishy material, a flexible material, and they're hollow, they're air-filled, um, it's almost like rubber. So they're a pretty cool decoy in that manner because I think even if you were to shoot this decoy, the decoy would definitely would not crack. It might just put a hole in it, but it almost feels like if you shoot it, it would kind of close itself back up and it wouldn't sink on you or get heavy and, and sit super deep in the water. So these are, these are uh, a good decoy. The, the hens have awesome texture on their backs. You can see there. The paint on this hen decoy is held up excellent. There's, I have no concerns with the paint on this decoy at all. It is held in there. Uh, I don't see any spots where it has worn off. Now these decoys, I'm hard on them. We throw them around in the boat. They bang together because they're on Texas rigs all the time. This one's held up great over the course of the first year of use. This other decoy, uh, this is the Drake. Again, nice decoy, same texture as the hen decoy, kind of squishy. These go about $90 per six decoys, so they're not extremely expensive, but they're not cheap either. All my decoys, except for these, I have actually bought on discount, on heavy discount, like when Gander Outdoors or Gander Mountain, I should say, was closing. I bought a ton of decoys at that point in time, all of them at like 50 to 60% off because Gander was going out of business. These I paid full price for, and uh, it's, a, it's a quality decoy. It's a solid decoy. Um, the keels are strong, flexible, and again, they're super light decoys. One thing, though, that you might notice on these decoys is on the underside here, maybe it's kind of hard to see, I don't know. Uh, I'll take some extra footage of it here in a second so you can see it. But on the underside here of these decoys, right down in here, the paint is starting to peel. So that's why I'm not going to buy any of these yet. I want to see what happens with these decoys. And again, I bang these around pretty, pretty solidly. 
And we have a little bit of wear and tear on the side of this decoy as well. This is after a year's use. So I'm going to give these another year before I make a decision on if I want to buy more of these or not. But again, I mean, it's a good looking decoy. If you kept these in like bags or in slotted decoy bags, I would, you would have zero concern. I don't think they would flake really at all. It'd probably take a long time. But we, we're hard on the decoys, uh, whether we're hiking them in or whatever. These decoys are a little bit darker than a lot of the other brands that we have. Don't know if that's good or bad thing. They're just a little bit different color. They're a little more gray compared to the white. These decoys are significantly bigger than, this is a hardcore decoy here, so this is kind of a, a value decoy. This is the Pool 7 Magnum Mallards over here, so it's a little bit more expensive, a little bigger. And then here is one compared to the GHG Pro Series decoys that I also reviewed. You notice the difference in color, but ultimately you really notice the difference in size, especially at a little bit of a distance there. This White Rock decoy is much bigger than all of the other decoys that I have. It is a legit Magnum decoy, but it's a good looking decoy. I think you'd like it if you purchased it. On that note guys, thank you so much for watching. You can check out some of our other content right over here or you can subscribe right here. Hope you guys have a good one. I'm Chase, we're somewhere in Wisconsin and we'll see you on the next one.